This video is sponsored by Incogni and tells the story of my attempt at a 20 mile hike through one of my absolute favourite corners of Germany, where I intended to camp by myself out in the forest. Unlike in some other countries in Europe, this is verboten pretty much everywhere in Germany, except for a couple of national parks that have saved a couple of places where, if you follow the rules, you can spend a night under the stars away from everything and everyone. Allowing me to take you with me on this weekend in the woods, where I can lose myself in my thoughts, lose myself in real life wait where am i going oh, i think this might have been the wrong way and eventually just lose the plot a nice cold pint of guinness if you want to do the same here's how step one take the short train ride to dresden and then on to pirna a lovely town on the banks of the river elba step two enjoy a pre-hike coffee in a local cafe and accidentally scare the waiter with your camera Step three, pay your dues. I need to buy a permit so that I can stay overnight in the national park tonight. And apparently you can buy them at the bus station here. I hope this is gonna be easy enough. As in, thank you, Shun. Nailed it. Step four, jump on a bus to a village deep in the heart of the nearby national park where the trail begins. So I just got off the bus in this tiny village called Rosenthal and was immediately witness to the sale of live animals. <laughs> or as they call it here in the countryside, Saturday. Step five, prepare for your unfiltered time with mother nature by covering your skin with various chemicals. Because UV rays are one enemy, but ticks are enemy number one. And step six, see what happens when you try to hike 14 miles before sundown, searching for this one particular camping spot and hoping that it's not already full. Attempt to get some sleep there and recover in time for hiking out again the next day towards another village where there's supposedly another bus connection back to civilization. All the while praying that you don't get lost in the woods forever, run out of food or water, or get killed by a runaway lioness slash wild boar. Which, yeah, sounds like a lot to me too. Before we get into it, step seven is to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is Incogni. One of the reasons that I think that it's healthy to challenge myself to get out in nature like this is that I've spent a lot of my life on the internet. And over that time, I've signed up to countless websites with my real name. If you can relate to that, then you can probably also relate to the fear that over the years, all of those websites have passed your personal data on and on until you just can't control the spread anymore. So where does the chain end? It ends with Incogni, a new website that stops the for-profit misuse of your personal data. Just give them consent to file legal data removal requests on your behalf and they fire them off to a growing catalogue of data brokers. Now, you can either figure out how to do all of this yourself if you have hundreds of hours to waste, and please, even I have better things to do with my time than that, or for a small monthly fee, just have Incogni do it. They have all of the necessary contacts and documents and they have the lawyers to back it up. The people whose records they've removed me from, I never would have even known had my personal data. But once you look into them a bit, it makes total sense that they're the people at the end of the chain gobbling up everybody's private information and profiting from it. A person search engine, a big advertising company. Yes, I want myself removed from these databases. And it's honestly such a nice feeling knowing that Incogni has started that process for me. Because yeah, sometimes your personal data getting out there can be really, really scary. Right now, you can sign up for Incogni from any EU country, the USA, Canada, the UK and Switzerland and they're even offering the first 100 people to sign up using the link in the description or use discount code Tom Thornton, a massive 60% off. So a big thank you to Incogni for sponsoring the video. If only I'd known that I didn't have to go to such lengths to get myself off the grid. But anyway, let's get back to it. The beginning of this trail was actually fairly busy on account of all the climbers, attracted from all over Germany by these towering sandstone spires but it wasn't long until I was fully on my own. I can't remember what got me onto the idea of sleeping outside in nature on this weekend in particular. I think I'd been spending too many days in a row at the computer and wanted to force myself to get out and do something challenging in a different way. But I thought that it would be good for me. What I didn't anticipate was exactly how it would be good for me. Two breaths of rural air in my lungs and suddenly everything was amplified. Wow, that's beautiful. You have such nice light today. You can see why these guys who like spent a lot of time in the forest, like um, Thoreau and these like poets who spent a lot of time in nature, you can see why they kind of romanticize everything. I guess you have no choice but to. Oh, I think this might have been the wrong way. Oh uh, no, this is it. This is what I wanted. These like yellow and green markers. Out here, you only have one target. Cover the distance to somewhere that you can sleep before it gets dark. And I knew that the only way I could actually make progress against that was pretty simple, just keep my feet moving beneath me. Nothing else at all would help, giving my brain the rare opportunity to think about life as much or as little as it wanted. 
What exactly awaited me at the campground if I even made it there and whether or not this whole thing was a terrible idea was all playing on my mind a little but just being out here and having started the journey there was feeling good and I was flying through the trail in a great mood. Yes, I already craved a hot meal after just a few hours. Oh, I could absolutely kill for some fried oyster mushrooms right now on top of a big bowl of pasta. And yes, my brain was still irrevocably poisoned by the 21st century. It's been all day walking past these until I realised that they're basically the gold coins that you have to collect in a video game. You know, it's basically just a little dopamine hit every time I walk past one. But ding but ding but ding <laughs> But so far, this weird quest to camp out in the woods had definitely done me good. Alright, I'm coming right up to it now, the camp spot. And then suddenly, there it was, the clearing in the woods. This hut, this bench, and some space outside for tents. We made it here, at least. I did have some business to sort out, which brings me to step eight. Wish that you brought a different pen with you so that you can validate your permit more easily. But I got it done in the end so that I could put it in this box inside the hut, where a few other weary hikers were already sprawled out in sleeping bags on the floor. But for me, it was outside alone tonight, how I'd always imagined it in my head on the walk up. Tonight's two course menu consisted of these seitan sausages and this pack with some kind of bean salad inside. The former being a bad idea because it made me so thirsty and wasted a lot of water and the latter being a bad idea because it just wasn't very good. But there is no seasoning or side dish half as good as being properly hungry. Aside from having made it here alive and another crazy plan having so far worked out, I knew that the main beauty of being here was having absolutely nothing to do. No phone service, no emails, just my own thoughts. Anything else would have to wait for Monday. I must briefly admit that this whole wild boy vibe did not stop me from asking the nice Germans who were laying down inside if they had phone signal. Since I was actually doing this on the day of the Champions League final and I really badly wanted to know who'd won. As it turned out, I'd have to wait until tomorrow to find out. Actually waiting to find out information. A bizarre concept if you ask me. That will never catch on. You know what I would give literally anything for right now? If I could just snap my fingers and that hut in front of me instead turned into a pub and someone came out and brought me a nice cold pint of Guinness. Maybe next time. Having somehow hardly slept a wink after all that exercise, I gradually noticed that the summer sun and the birdsong were coming back and I felt that I might as well get a jump on the day. The only way out is through after all. Okay, let's go. My sleepless night was more than made up for by the privilege of being out here in the forest so early, feeling like I was the only one watching this sunrise over the sandstone cliffs. I've always been a big music listener and especially since after starting to learn a second language, I don't give my ears five minutes peace without playing a German podcast into them. Trying to make the absolute best use of my time and not miss out on a single thing that's happening in the world. But it's funny how it only takes one night to just forget about that world and all of its pressures. And I can honestly say that for this entire trip, I did not once reach for my headphones. I just spent it, you know, being bored and learning that that's fine. 
focusing on the beating of my feet down on the floor, following the trail of gold coins, ooh, double dopamine, and letting my mind wander wherever it wanted, until it wandered itself right back out of the forest and into this tiny village, which was inexplicably home to more dinosaurs than awake human residents. But as long as I'd read the online bus timetable correctly, I did have a ticket out of here. Which brings us to step nine, realize that you only went and did it. Thanks again to Incogni for sponsoring the video, check them out at the link in the description, and thanks to you for watching. I'll see you next time.